In April 2023, Val and I took narrowboat reverie onto the stunning River Weaver. The river frequently switches from industrialisation to rural idyll and back again. The industrial sections are pretty interesting, the rural sections often a visual delight. In this, the first of three episodes, we cruise from Winsford to the Anderton boat lift. Having successfully reversed out of the Winsford moorings and avoided the sandbank on the Winsford flash, we're on our way. The CRT have no jurisdiction over the moorings and the flash, and the flash is too shallow to navigate. The riverbanks are a testament to the salt and chemical industries. The vast bed of salt under Winsford was discovered in 1844 whilst prospecting for coal. The Salt Union Works is the UK's largest salt mine, mainly providing rock salt for spreading on roads during icy weather. The underground void is now about five square miles, larger than 700 football pitches. Parts of the void are being used to store hazardous waste, but the constant temperature means that some of the National Archives and police records are also kept there. Half a million tonnes of salt are stored here, and the mine excavates about 15,000 tonnes a day. Many of the ponds around here have been caused by subsidence from the mining. This long strait is Vale Royal Cut, a channel dug alongside the river during the 1790s, which allowed much larger craft to access downstream. Cormorants are a common sight on the weaver, but this is not something which can be said about mandarin ducks. This pair, close to our mooring, attracted quite a lot of attention. River Weaver is actually 71 miles long, but it's only the last 19 or 20 that are navigable by narrowboat. Strangely enough, the river actually runs under several canals. First of all, it runs through Rembry on the Flangotten Canal. It then heads south towards Audlem and runs under the Shropshire Union Canal, where it then turns north and runs through Nantwich. After that, it heads further north and runs under the Middlewich branch of the Shropshire Union Canal around about Church Minshall. From there, it actually runs fairly parallel to the canal before heading north towards Winsford. Early spring and everyone is nest building and the blackthorn is in blossom. Vale Royal locks ahead. There are three locks here of differing sizes, although the smaller lock, which was the original narrow lock, is no longer in use. Just been and had a word with the Lockie. Um, apparently we're waiting for 
his mates to come back from the next lock so there always has to be two lockies on and as they've only got three lockies between the two locks so one's having to drive between the, the two locks in a van anyway so he's waiting for him to come back but we're also waiting on a cruiser and another narrowboat to go through the lock with they are huge locks absolutely huge but before we enter some foliage needs to be removed we enter the middle lock, the smaller of the two remaining locks. Plenty of gongoozling action as we wait for the other boats to enter the lock. These locks are quite unique. Strange paddle gear. And just look at those lock ladders. Not sure if I'd fancy putting my hands in there. And the swallows are up for some springtime frolics on the old gas lamps. And amazing to see the old railway signalling gear. That takes me back to my childhood. Now redundant, these were used to signal to boats when the lock was ready for them. And behind us, the other boats leave the lock. Ahead, there's a rather lovely Dutch style barge. I wish I'd known about these when looking for a boat. But actually, I must admit, I'm extremely happy with Reverie. Vale Royal Viaduct ahead. The narrowboat and two GRPs are still holding a steady pace behind us. Plenty of work going on in this boatyard. We leave Hunt's Lock, where we were joined in the lock by yet another cruiser. Safe Hand, it was the last steam driven vessel built for service on the River Mersey. She's a tanker, built to carry crude vegetable oil. It's great to see all the historic boats in Yarwood's Basin. Parfield, another Yarwood's craft, and the Duke of Normandy, a German customs and excise launch. She was requisitioned by the German Navy during the war, serving in the Channel Islands and was subsequently claimed by the British. The CRT bins are located on this pontoon just south of Hayhurst Bridge. It's no longer the water point or pump out station. They are on the other side of town. CRT dredgers. I think the crane has seen better days though. Hayhurst is one of two swing bridges in Northwich. There are plenty of visitor moorings on the left and Northwich Marina on the right and we need to pop in to get some gas. 
We try to find somewhere to pull in, but the wind is really strong and there's a bit of a flow on the river. And oops, just made a bit of a hasher that. I pull out and try again, maybe in a different spot. This'll do. All seems to be going well, but the wind catches us again and drives the stern into the metal piling on the left. I'm desperately trying to avoid hitting the fiberglass boat on the left. Thank you. Every time we get near the wind catches us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brilliant. And that's the good thing about boaters. Always happy to lend a hand. Val ties us nicely, but sadly they couldn't sell us any gas, so it was all just a learning experience. Next stop is to get a pump out at the CRT facilities just north of the town bridge. We then do a 180 to continue heading north towards Anderton. And more visitor moorings next to the cinema on the right. These are old lock gates, although why they've been left here is anybody's guess. The River Dane enters the Weaver on the right. Its footbridge can be seen behind us now. More industry and another heron. This one fishing from a sunken salt barge. the boat lift comes into view. And if you haven't already done so, check out our previous video showing our boat being lowered 50 foot into the River Weaver on this Victorian edifice. The Tata Chemical Works now sit opposite the lift producing washing soda. Oddly enough, polythene was accidentally invented here in 1933. To the left of the boat lift is the area where waiting salt barges were once loaded with salt tipped 50 foot down the chutes from the Trenton Mersey Canal. The boat lift replaced this work in practice by transporting the salt barges from the canal and onto the river. And in the second part of our tour along the Weaver, we cruise through the outstanding natural beauty of this navigation and also have a close encounter with the Danny.